With experience comes longevity, and with that comes a sharpened sense of creativity as well as brand awareness. This has summed up the incredible fashion story of MoFA. Stay tuned as we speak to the creative mind herself, Yinka Orolambo, who is going to be dropping entrepreneurial gems and giving us invaluable insight on how to attain legendary status in this competitive fashion game. I'm Sika Ose, welcome to Fashion Insider. <laughs> Yinka. Hi, Sika. It's so good, to, good see to see you. You haven't <laughs> aged a bit since I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that beautiful green dress you put me in? Yes. For the Eloy Awards. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely stunning. Oh, thank you. They say you're one of the greats. Oh, Is that a lot of pressure? Or do you actually take that role and say, yes, I've earned my place? Uh, yeah, I'll say I've taken the role mm. um, and my place. It's been nine years, yes. so I think it's, uh, it's been long overdue. Yeah. Nine years, did you think mm -hmm. you'll still be doing fashion? Yes, because it's something I've always wanted to do. I mean, I didn't have a plan B. Going into fashion, I just wanted to do fashion. But although I didn't know, at the time, I didn't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills, but yeah. it was something that I want always wanted to do. So so what were you doing to pay the bills before okay. you went into fashion? I mean, I just finished university, yes. so I wasn't really doing much. So immediately after university, I think about two or three weeks later, I found a fashion school. But before then, I was living with my parents, I was eating free food, yes. <laughs> and everything was free. So I wasn't really paying uh, bills. But yeah. of course, you know, after I finished and then it was time for me to do my NYSA, they were like, okay, we're giving you everything will hold you. So mm -hmm. I think you should just go do your NYSA and get a proper job. So, so MoFA Designs was created. Yes. Was. How did the name come about? What, what is, what's MoFA? The, my initials. Yes. So the hem is Mokpileola, the O is Ola Inka, the other O is Ola Iton, and then the F is Fashola. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and say. No, all those <laughs> lots of names. I'm not gonna try and say all those names. Okay, so it's like a synonym of your yes, name. Yes, yes. Got you. Since you started this business, mm -hmm. what would you say, especially doing business in Nigeria, has been the key to sustainability for your business? You have to be consistent. You have to take uh, feedback with a positive attitude. Got you. You can't get uh, upset. I mean, when people tell you, oh, this is what and this is what you're doing yes. wrong. So you always have to get better at things that you're doing. And that was that was that something you learned yes. during the journey? Yes. When people come and say it's not nice mm -hmm. or they don't like it, mm -hmm. they get very, very offended. Yes. Yeah. But would you say it's very important to be able to have like that balance? Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't get too upset because mm -hmm. everybody has their own opinion. The fact that you like it doesn't mean every other person is going to love it. So, yes. but you know, you just, if they complain about one particular thing, mm. you can try to modify it or you can stick to it. People who love it will stay come for it. Has the MoFA aesthetic changed? I wouldn't say, uh, no, it hasn't changed. What We're was just it in refining. the beginning and then how has it been refined till now? Okay, I would say, I mean, unfortunately, I probably don't have a lot of picture, but it, the Damask fabric is something I've been working with mm. ever since I started. Mm. Um, Ankara is something I've always loved. Yes. So at the time, I was doing a lot of denim, but I would say I've told now I'm in denim because so many people are doing denim and I think I've overdone. Yeah, yeah, I've overdone it. Yeah. It's still the same fabric, but we just refine it. Got you know, you. had more laces, you know, maybe more um, unbeaded, you know. Initially, I was doing like putting a plate on. But now, you know, I have enough um, staff strength to do, to shrink the beads one by one, you know, just more gotcha. refined. So yeah. you've grown, your staff yes. strength has also grown, so you're able to really do well. so much mm -hmm. more. Yes. But it's still competitive out there, it isn't is. it? It is. Very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel. It is. It's really competitive. It is. I mean, Young they, designers are coming yeah, every, every day. single day. Every second. Every single <laughs> second. Yeah. Has that put pressure on you in any way? Um, I mean, it just make you to make you. Um, I'll say, is this stand or sit or like stand on your toes? Like yeah. you know that you can't fail, you can't be relaxed. So, mm -hmm. But you're still doing your own thing, you know, minding your own business. Yeah. But you need to always improve. Yes. You need to always give people what they want. You need to always give them new things because if you have like a uh, hundred clients and then you're doing the same thing and you've done about the same thing for about hundred of them, mm -hmm. you know, they want something new. They want something fresh. So yeah. you always have to keep it fresh all the time. Would it would it be right to say or even like interesting enough to say that? These young designers also inspire you in yes, some way. Yes, yeah, because when you see them, you're like, oh, oh, wow, you know, this is nice. Yeah. You don't have to. So you know that some things can be done. 
you know, uh, as a creative person, sometimes you see things just in your own perspective, mm. in your own way. You're just looking at one direction. But sometimes it's just good to see other people like, oh, yeah, that's nice, you know? Yeah. But not like you have to copy, you know, and paste other people. They can inspire you and then you do it in a totally different, different way. way. And yeah. put your little sprinkle and yeah, touch and sauce on no, it. No, you put a whole lot of sprinkle <laughs> and sauce on it. Otherwise, you're just going to be a copycat. That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. You know, competition is very good. It is good. It helps mm. you grow. One thing that I love mm -hmm. about your brand is you cater for so many different demographics of women. Yes. But do you ever remember the first clientele that ever walked through your doors? Uh, and how that feeling <laughs> felt like? One of my first clients, clients that I love were, um, at the time, okay, she still has this, I mean, she still has the same surname. Her name is Doyin um, Aki Yelure. You know, um, is she's she still your client. Now? Yes, yes, wow. yeah. At some point, you know, we missed each other. Then after I watched, started coming back. You know, she doesn't really so much, but mm. she comes into my radio to wear when mm. she has a strawberry. And I had Watch. like few other ones. Yeah. Even one of my clients that just left now, if a cracker, the one that just left, she's been with me then since about well, nine years. Even yes. when she comes in, oh, I like this. Oh, I like your work. I like your. Yes. Work. You know, I've had you know couple of clients that they were with me at the time, and then now, and the person I would say the person that paid me the the most money at the time like in love song i did a lot of ashwabi for her um mm. in america it's uh, mrs uh, kemi ogubanja nikki ogubanja sorry you know at the, one time i was even frustrated I, you know i have a few clients come in um to drop fabric you know when i finish sewing it i will take it to them you know they'll do the fitting i'll yeah. bring it back to one yeah. of i only had one tailor at some point you know, wow. you adjust it and all of that. And I'll take it back to them. Like, I'm so exhausted. I was almost crying. And she was like, oh, you got, what is wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. I gave her the clothes, the kids, the clothes, they fitted. I said, you know what? I said, I don't think I will be able to make anything out of this thing. Oh. He can't pay the bills. I was honestly frustrated. Yeah. My told that, you know what? And said, is it possible to just get me a job? You know, just something. So you, you wanted know? to just leave the fashion yes. job and do a yes. nine to five? Yes, 100 at the time. Wow. Like, I really want to, you know, let me just get him proper job mm. maybe after a while maybe i'll come back to it but for now i don't mm. think i can make anything out of it and she looked at him and said you know what Nienke, i will not like to you if i'm going to get you a job you know what you know your sewing machine whatever you have just keep it somewhere mm. because i know that when you get the job two three four five months max you come back to it because yeah. i can see that the it was something yeah love. i could see the love after a while you know the next day she called me and then you know i we spoke you know she tried to get one of so that client for me yeah. and i made an outfit for them and they loved it she was like you see yeah. it's not that bad i think you should just continue you know yeah. that's how i mean that is from from then i just kept the my me looking for a nine to five job i just kept it aside, aside. and just, and just concentrated yeah and, and she focused. told me you know nothing good comes easy that's right so i walked in here and i'm seeing a lot of ready to wear stuff mm -hmm. is this where most of your revenue comes from um, or bespoke things or customized things I was still ready to wear because, you know, in Nigeria, we so last minute people. Yeah. So it's easier for people to just come in, see what you have on the rack Got and then you. you just pick up and then and, and leave. And leave. Yeah. Let's talk about social media. Okay. When you started nine years ago, yeah. IG was not what it was no. now. No, it I didn't even know anything about, about social media. media. No. Has it gone over your head or are you now just getting into the social media time, just understanding, you know, like online marketing and things like that? Online marketing is, of course, you know, everybody's getting excited now. You know, you put, you do some, I mean, like a amazing place. You post, everybody's going, oh, mm. I like it, I like it. It's, I mean, I would say it's very nice yeah. yeah, to get likes. Mm -hmm. But does it translate to sales? No, it doesn't. Interesting. No, I don't think so. So no. do you think for you, the conventional and old school way of marketing, you see somebody wearing something, you ask where, where it's from. Yes, I think that's all. Yeah, people that do a lot of that. Yeah, maybe because, um, maybe the kind of clientele that I have, yeah. you know, they see on social media, they like it. Some they even like the picture, like they don't put like on it. They yeah. just send a mail or screenshot or call the store. Oh, I just saw a dress now, you know, Nika Olamide or Elizabeth, you know, just keep it for me. Yeah. I'm coming for that or just do my site. So I would maybe, maybe it's the age bracket mm. of the client up that, that I that have. You have. Yes, maybe they don't go on it to like. Yes. But, you know, on my page, a, a dress might have just five likes and it's been sold. Wow. Yeah, I've had that, like, um, we just posted a picture, like, 10 minutes later, somebody called and said it's sold. And mm. the person was like, you just posted it. Say yes, mm. it's sold. But you have almost, like, over 90,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, we do. But... Uh, maybe, maybe younger. Yeah. Maybe younger. What about celebrities? 
Yeah, it sells. Have they helped your industry and your and your your business? Yes, I'll say. Way? I've had quite a number of them. I would say, you know, Killer sells. I would say Osa sells very well. Okay. Mr. Dominic sells. Okay. Michelle. Yeah. Those that you've mentioned, they make any outfit look so trendy exactly. and so beautiful. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yinka, let's talk a little bit about your fashion school. Mm -hmm. How has that been going? I mean, what even prompted you to start it? And what has been the most fulfilling part about it? So at the time I was looking for fashion school, there was really none. At the time, maybe in Dubai, New York or London, yeah. I, I, I can't afford it at the time. Yeah. So fortunately for me, I was able to find one in Lekki. She's an older woman, you know, she really loved, you know, fashion. So she has her own, you know, sewing place and then she, she, she was running like a really small fashion school. So I enrolled with her. Even before I finished my course, she traveled. She had to relocate. So I was able to take it up for her. She told me, you know, well, you know, people are here. You can't just ask them to go. And I was about, I just finished from the school. Yeah. And you can just take up these, um, the classes for me, mm. you know, just to finish. I, I mean, I, I, I was using our facilities, then after a while, I finished, then, and everybody moved on. So after run, then I got to my own place, I decided to, you know what, maybe just have, and I have few people to come in to say, oh, I really want to do this thing, there's no way to learn, there's no way to learn. So I decided to, you know, have my own, um, training institute that, yeah. um, it encompasses everything that you need to learn without taking too long. Got you. Yeah, not too long, and then very affordable. Yes. How long is the course? I have for three months and then we have for six months. The I basic see. class is three months, which is uh, the beginner class. For the um, more advanced and then beginner and advanced together is what we have for six months. But yes. it's just the basic is um, gotcha. um, three months and then the refresher course is three months as well. Gotcha. So it's very affordable. Yeah. I mean, and the fulfilling part of it is when you have your student people that you mentor. I've met like quite a number of people. Yeah. And then you do it really well. You're mm. so proud. And you, they see you, some manager go, oh, oh my, you <laughs> you're really, it's very fulfilling. Mm. As an OG in the business, mm -hmm. for anybody who is about to start a fashion business yeah. or wants to go into a fashion mm -hmm. business, what do you think is the key thing they need to concentrate on? For, look, some people do it without knowing how to cut and sew, yeah. but it is very important. Mm. It even destabilizes you when you don't know your left from your right. You don't even know where to turn to. So it's very yes. important. You have to know about the business. Mm. If, if, of course, you end up not going on the sewing machine by yourself all the time, yes. you know, but you need to know what you're doing. And you, while you're training, you need to know your own aesthetics. Yeah. What do you want to do? What do you, how do you want people to see your brand? When they say, um, Sika, you know, what comes to mind? Yes. She's not Coke and Fanta, you know, she's ebony, she's marinated. So you want oh, people to know. You. Yeah. <laughs> she's fabulous. Yes. So <laughs> you want people to have a picture in their mind when yes. you hear your name. Yeah. It's so great to have sat with you thank after you. so long. Yeah, and you're still glowing you. <laughs> and doing well. So thank you thank so much, you. Inka. It's nice to see you. Yes, thank you so is. much. It Sika. is. It is. It is such a great time sharing experience and somebody who's done it and knows what it takes to get there. I hope you've learned so much. I certainly have. Make sure to learn more to go on our social media pages and to follow Fashion Insider because we have more, so much more coming for you this season. I'm Sika Osei. This has been Fashion Insider. See you next week.